Hello everybody and you're very welcome back to the greenhouse at Darver House Nursery for a little video on making a pollinator friendly window box or container. Now I'm just using this big window box because it's what I happen to have to hand but you can use a big pot or you can use um, a tub of some description or a half barrel or whatever you have yourself. I wouldn't go anything too small because the plants that are going into this need to be um, left, left there for a good long time so they're going to need a lot of nutrients so you're going to have to feed them a little bit after doing all of this. So for this now this is a very deep window box and I'm putting a mixture of permanent uh, plants and annuals into it. Now I have prepped this by putting some um, broken up um, styrofoam into the bottom for drainage. There is make sure there's drainage holes in your container before you do anything. Now a container can be as say, anything you have yourself um, at home as long as it has drainage for plants. Now in this I have compost which has added grit and slow release fertilizer which is you can buy and you can add it to your own compost and this would release nutrients right through the uh, for I suppose six months into this and then at the end of the summer when these have grown and flowered there'll be some permanent plants left in it and there will be also some annuals so the permanent plants if you wish you can take them out and you can plant them out in the garden or else you can leave them in it except there's going to be one, but I'll explain that as I'm going along. So I've chosen for this a kind of a um, mixture that are very clashing colors for this um, basket for pollinators because they see different colors than we do. And I'm going to start in the center with this dahlia. And I hope there's no snails lurking around the edge of this. This is a dahlia called Wink. And it's a lovely pink with a deep center and it's kind of got a purpley, um, purpley tint foliage. So I'm gonna pop him in the middle. So I'm just, this is a tuber, which I grew this year from a tuber that I bought. And it's grown very, very well. And I'm going to pop him into the center. Now, this will have to be taken in. If you're leaving this window box, um, intact for the winter you will have to leave put it inside somewhere because the frost could kill the tuber now another little trick with dahlias this time of the year it's very simple to take a cutting from a dahlia uh, with a very sharp secateur's knife just cut it where it's coming up from the tuber under two leaves where there's two leaves and cut it there and you can maybe get two cuttings out of one piece and take off any flowers and mix, put it into a mixture of perlite and and peat or compost or peat free compost if you have or just plain perlite and put them in in a shady place in a little flower pot and they will root in a few weeks and it's a very easy way of multiplying your dahlias okay that's that guy now i'm going to put these salvias this is a hardy salvia it's called Salvia Nemorosa New Dimension Blue. And this is pink, and this is blue. Now this is a perennial, so this is going to come every year. And salvia is like sunny, dry conditions. It doesn't want to come out now. Whoops, it's gonna to have to move, move my window box here and I'm just gonna give this a little, a little roll on the table. That's a little tip, just bang the side of the pot. And we have a nice root system there, which isn't too root bound, pot bound. But I'm just going to tease out his little roots a little bit. And then I'm just going to pop him in beside the, oh, did I, did I damage that one? I hope not. Beside the, the um, dahlia. And I have another one for the same, of the same. Um, these are a very good plant and they're easy to grow. Take off a little pot down as well. Put him in beside him there. Oh, I need bits. Now this would be suitable to put on a on a patio or on top of a wall because it's good and big. Now I need a bit of foliage as well in this, so I'm going to use some of these hostas, 
This is Hosta Praying Hands and it's very elegant. Look at those lovely leaves and it's a very strong um, kind of corrugated leaf. So I think the snails mightn't like it too much. So I'm just going to pop him in there. A little bit of compost knocking around. And I have another one somewhere. Pop him in beside him. And maybe it would be a good idea if I put the labels in and I'll bury them at the back because if I don't, I could forget who's here next winter and you think you'll remember, but you don't remember. Now I should have put this on the turntable to be able to let you see, but um, I it's too, it's very heavy. So I'm just, they're just sitting down below the level now of the edge of the pot. Of the, of the rim of the window box, beg your pardon. And now it's pink, blue, and it's this foliage. So we need some bits that are going to hang out over uh, both sides, I think, because this is going to be a looky down arrangement. Uh, that's what I call it anyway. So I'm going to just fill in another little bit of compost around. And I don't know if I'll just tilt it that way so you can see how we're going. That's the main, the main structure across the middle. And I'm going to put some compost in here. And I will try and turn it around as I go along. What am I going to put in next? That's a good decision, big decision to make. Depends on what you really, what you like and what color scheme you kind of want to go with. So at the moment I have pinks and blues, but I think I'm going to be a bit clashing and um, put in some orange. And I have a lovely little plant that I want to use. Now I'm just going to give that a push around. Oh, oh, I don't, I'm after breaking that bit off now, but it might be okay. I damaged it. That's just, he might be okay when I pop him up a little bit. I think it's just a little bit wibbly wobbly from being in the pot um, and the one he was in. So when you plant just all annuals, they all have to be just dumped at the end of the year. And I think being more sustainable to plant some perennial plants, which are ones that come back every year. So now we have the two sides of this. Now, who am I going to put in? I'm going to start at this side and I'll work my way around and I'll show you the plants I'm putting in and do the same at the far side. This is a little plant called Biden's. You'll think of that now when you think of President Biden because it's a lovely little orange um, daisy and it's, it's especially for bees. And you'll see these, um, this is Bee Dance Red, it's called. And it's just for the summer. But anyway, we'll, we'll put him in and hopefully he'll give the bees a little dance. I, I just like the colour of that. Now I'm going to put in next to him a little bit of trailing blue lobelia, which you all know, I'm sure. And I'm just going to tease out his little roots and I'm going to pop him in beside that. Probably will get a little bit swamped, but hopefully um, it will it'll come on. Now I could put in this guy, which is called Lysomachia or Creeping Jenny. It's a trailer and it's very good in a hanging basket, but I don't think I'm going to use that, but you could do. I'm going to pop in some nasturtiums, orange nasturtiums, because they're a very good plant for insects of all pollinators. And there's two left in this tray, which I'm going to use up. I'm going to put one in underneath the dahlia because these are trailing nasturtiums. Now that's quite pot root bound here, the little guy. So I'm just going to tease out his little roots and I'm going to put him in there and tuck a little bit more compost in around him. He's going to be so relieved to get into some new compost. 
and get a chance to flourish and grow. And I'm going to put another blue lobelia beside him. This is trailing lobelia. Um, I think it's probably a better one to grow than in this kind of a container than the bushy one. Now, if everybody did a little box like this with pollinators in it, it would be so beneficial for all the plants, all, all the plants in the garden to pollinate them so that they can go ahead and produce seed. And also, it would be very good for the bees and hoverflies and insects of all descriptions that are flying around that need a little pit stop everywhere they go to get some food. Now I'm just putting another bit of lobelia in here at this end just to do the corner. And I'm going to go for another one. This game has to be teased out at the other end. At the end beside the orange bindings. It's an easy plant to remember now. So we have Hosta, Salvia, Dahlia, Salvia, Hosta, Lobelia, Bidens, Lobelia, Nasturtium, Lobelia, Bidens, and uh, Lobelia. Oh, I'm going to try and turn that around. Oops. Oh, now, hopefully, you can, it's a bit brighter looking now at your side, and you can see what I'm doing. If you do this in a, in a round pot, Again, you would put the dahlia in the centre and put the other plants um, equidistant around it. It's up to yourselves where you'd like to pop them. Oh, I have another one of these now. I do. Two of these guys. Now, another thing you could put in here are these calendulas. This is the pot marigold. This is one called Fiesta Orange. And I'm hoping they're single flowers because single flowers are little, oh, there's a little spider. So we have our biodiversity here already, are more suitable for insects to be able to get pollen and nectar from because they can't get into really double flowers like big begonias or things like that. You can't, they can't no negotiate the, the pollen. So I'm going to start at the side now as well with another one of these uh, lobelias and I'm going to put him in first at the corner and then I'm going to go for another one of my Bidens. I love this plant and this also comes in yellow and it's a lovely lovely little plant. I have a hanging basket done which I did for uh, something else I can't remember now um, when I did it and it's got similar color scheme in it so hopefully this one will blend in who did I put next a lobelia uh, lobelia bindings another lobelia another lobelia Make sure that you tuck them all in well. They're like babies, they need to be tucked in. And nasturtium. I'm not really worried if it's yellow or orange, the nasturtium, but similar kind of colour scheme. Nasturtiums are a good um, companion plant to plant. Another bit of lobelia. Oops. And another Biden's. Hopefully the weather now is going to improve and they'll all get a chance to do their thing because it hasn't been good. Um, I have hail, we have hailstones, frost, rain, you name it. But it's a little bit warmer, so hopefully things will start to flourish. The weeds are definitely growing, I can tell you that, because I have them everywhere. This is preferable doing these planting nice jobs to pulling weeds, although I do like pulling weeds. Now we have that done there. Now I could put in one of these because these guys are a help to deter green fly. So 
I'm just going to put two of those into the middle, one at one end and one at the other end. This little guy seems to be a double flower, but we, we'll forgive him for being that. We'll chance him in the centre here. And we'll put another little one in here. It's amazing what you can fit into a box, to be quite honest. <laughs> it's very, it's very um, easy to shove them all in. Now, another thing you could use would be this Namisha. This is Sundrop Mix, which is a lovely little plant. And again, it has little, little funnels so the insects can get in to take nectar and pollen. And that's another tray of the nasturtiums, which badly need to be planted out at this stage. Another little uh, plant is the viola. Um, they're beautiful, the little faces on them. They are such a lovely little plant. Um, and they are very good also. So you could use those in this. Now, I'm not sure if you can, I'll just tilt it forwards so you can see it's quite full. And it'll be interesting to see how that, how that grows. But it should give me good color right through until October. And if you keep deadheading the plants, especially the dahlias, and just keep an eye for snugs and snails. And if you wish, and I did it, did I bring it in? I did. If you wish, if you add, this is horticultural grit, which is available in garden centres in a bag. Very handy thing to have, because it works well also for rooting cuttings. You can put horticultural grit on the top of this, and, it's, it will deter slugs and snails. It will also help to keep the moisture in. So if you top dress your pots with grit, it does help. Now, if I was just having hostas in a pot, I would add in my broken eggshells around the top. I put all my eggshells in the bottom of the oven and I let them dry out. And then I crunch them all up and I keep them and I put them on top of my hostas especially. I like hostas in pots because I think they look very, they look very nice all grouped together and you can kind of protect them a little bit better from slugs and snails. But they have to live also the slugs and the snails. I was out in the garden the other evening and I could hear this hammering going on. I said, what is going on? Because my bees had decided well, they weren't my bees actually, as it turned out. They were a swarm that had come to visit me, which I managed to capture and keep, which is nice. And be able to mine them. Oh, I'm going to break this window box. Or, oh, this is heavy, heavy, heavy. So I'm just going to put another bit of the grit in. But it was a uh, blackbird or a thrush or somebody. I didn't get to find where they were. I just tried to follow the sound. But by the time I got there, they had extricated the snail from the shell and probably took it to one of their very hungry chickens in the nest. And uh, it's a, so nature, nature and biodiversity in the garden is very important so that you can have, they can all live happily together. So I'm not particularly worried about a lot of weeds, certain ones I need to sort out, but Everything has to have a place and it's nice that the balance then will build up in the garden and hopefully who has to eat the pests will eat them to live and then they leave your plants alone. Now that's a fairly full container. I, I just think the grit is, is lovely and it gives a nice finish to the top of a pot. I will be doing another video on a hanging basket, a pollinator hanging basket, hopefully. And I might do on on, on um, something else also for, for the library. And I hope you all have a go at planting up something to brighten up your patio or your garden or put, put it somewhere where you can enjoy and also enjoy the insects and the, uh, that come to visit and get nectar and pollen from your contribution to their takeaway when they're on their little pit stop around the town or the village or the countryside or wherever. Because if we all do our little bit to help our 
insects and our biodiversity and our pollinators, it will be a great help to them to get over this bad weather we've had for one thing and help them to pollinate the crops so that we will have food to live. And thank you all for tuning in again to this little video and I'll chat to you all again soon. Bye.